Hey guys, the Airsoft Tech here, and today we will be starting a new video series in which we take a look at the upgrade process of the gun that I am working on. This gun is a VFC M27 IAR, one of the limited edition ones that is really awesome, and the customer wanted me to turn it into a milsim gun, 20 RPS, 400 FPS. So, without further ado, let's get started with part one. For part one of this four part series, we will be primarily installing drivetrain components. We'll go over them now. We will be installing Siege Tech 10 to 1 SSG gears for DAT trigger response. An SHS piston to replace the broken and cruddy VFC piston. A Lonex cutoff lever because the VFC one is completely worn down. In addition, we will be constructing a 28 TPA Frankentorque motor out of a ZCI motor and a 28 TPA O type armature. Now, the VFC gearbox isn't that great, if you ask me. It has thin wires, a frail piston that strips on the most basic of setups, a weak tab plate that is built out of the same material that the piston is built out of, self shimming gears that are almost always too tight to be considered good, and a motor that is just utter garbage. However, before we install the aforementioned parts, we will need to clean the gearbox of its gunk, so I'll BRB. As you can see, the gearbox is pretty well cleaned out. I don't have any grease in there. Everything's cleaned out and ready to go. Also, I have radius the front of the gearbox shell itself so I can take more stress, as you can see right there. If you want to know more about radiusing, I have a video on how to do it. I'll link it below in the description. But now, now we're ready to begin installing parts. Let's first build that Franken torque. This isn't hard, but you do need to know what you're doing so you don't mess up. Hopefully I'll be making a video in the near future explaining how to do this. And as you can see, I've installed an SHS O-type pinion to the 28 TPA O-type uh, armature to get the best meshing possible with the Siege Tech bevel gear. Before we get down into shimming, we're actually going to install the cutoff lever first, as you need the cutoff lever when you start shimming. So I have the cutoff lever installed, and I didn't, I didn't need to Dremel anything, so it actually was a straight drop in, and that's perfectly awesome, because I, I absolutely hate getting cutoff levers to fit. And this one goes all the way up, goes all the way down just fine. Now, it, you want to make sure your cutoff lever is loose, like this one, to where it's not super tight, but it's not super loose. If you tighten your screw down all the way, and it's so tight that this cutoff lever won't move, then you need to loosen it up to where it does move. But you don't need to loosen up to the point to where it wobbles back and forth like crazy. This one can barely wobble at all, which is just what I want. It's easy to go back and forth on, offers hardly any resi resistance at all, and it's going to work just fine. Now you will want to install the selector, uh, selector plate before you do install the cutoff lever as you know you need to put down the selector plate before you put the cutoff lever on. It's just really hard to put a selector plate on without uh, like with the cutoff lever on. So you know selector plate first and then uh, cutoff lever. Now let's start shimming the siege techs. I won't be filming the shimming process mainly because it's going to make this video an hour long. In the near future I will make a shimming guide. With a little bit of movie magic and tons of shimming work, I'm back with hardly any time elapsed. Yeah, right. Let's close the shell and hear the gears. Our gearbox is closed, all three gears are installed, and they're shimmed and ready to go. Let's see how they sound. Sound a bit squeaky. However, this is a common problem that I will show you how to fix real quick. This is the result of the gear axles being too small or the bushing holes being too small to fit well with the axles. So what it does is when you spin them, you get this really loud squeaky sound, which is the axles wobbling back and forth as they spin. This can be easily remedied by putting some silicone grease or silicone oil on the axles themselves, and this prevents the wobbling and just basically fixes the squeaking issue. Is this really a problem? Not really, unless the bushings are you know, totally off and the axles are totally off and use some of the bushings, then it could cause problems. But as long as the gear, as long as the gears spin and don't lock up, it should be fine. If that squeaking sound is there, just apply some grease to the axles and the sound will be gone. As a show of proof, I have put grease on the axles of the gears to eliminate the squeaking sound. And here's the result. As you can hear, there is no squeaking sound and all you can hear are the gears spinning. They all spin very freely. They all have the necessary amount of wiggle room so that they can actually spin freely. None of them are locked down. And the motor and the bevel, and, well, more or less the pinion and the bevel, are shimmed just fine. Let's move on to the piston. We've got the SHS piston right here, and I've fitted the VFC stock piston head on top of it. And we're going to check our angle of engagement and correct it. So let's go ahead and check it real quick. 
Now our angle of engagement is pretty well off. Um, there you go. It's pretty well off, and what we're going to do to fix that is we're going to add some faucet washer and probably a metal washer as well. I don't believe one faucet washer will do it, so let's actually get two. So I have fitted the metal washer between the piston and the piston head, and I've put a rubber faucet washer on the cylinder head, and this is how our AOE looks right now. The pickup tooth on both the sector gear and the piston are meshing absolutely perfectly. They are flush, and there is no space in between them, which is exactly what we want. However, what this did is it backspaced our piston, which meant that another tooth is intersecting with our sector gear. This tooth right here, the second tooth on the piston, or actually the third, is in the way. So we're going to need to probably shave it down and uh, just make room. So I'll go do that and we'll check it when we're done. I just got done dremeling down the piston teeth on my piston. And as you can see, I have perfect AOE that is completely unrestricted. And so now our piston is much less likely to break. Now that our angle of engagement is perfect, we are now allowed to glue the faucet washer down to the cylinder head. Now I have actually cleared the rubber cylinder head washer here, uh, clear of any grease so the glue is more able to stick to it. In addition, I've cleared this of any grease so that might be on it as well. What I recommend you doing before super gluing the stuff down is to score up the rubber, rubber pads where they're going to contact because, you know, it'll the glue will cure better between them and it'll stick a heck of a lot better. If you don't do this, your faucet washer may come undone like I've had happen to me in the past. It's just a heck of a lot safer to go through this route and just take a little bit of an extra time to score up your pad before gluing it on. Something I recommend to do for SHS pistons and well, any piston as a matter of fact, is to glue the metal rack down on the piston. So I'm going to do just that real quick. What this does is it helps to secure the rack in the piston body so that the pickup teeth are less likely to strip off the piston. As a final topic for our piston, you can tell that there is absolutely no Swiss cheese and no weight reduction of any kind on this piston. There's actually technically a weight increase with a little bit of a metal washer I've got in there for angle of engagement correction. However, this isn't really a negative here. For this type of build, I don't really need to Swiss cheese as the RPS is only going to be around 22 or 23. I shouldn't be hitting PME or premature engagement on an M120 spring full stroke. Another little thing with the Siege Tech gears, especially with the Gen 3s, is you're going to have to modify your anti-reversal latch to actually work with the Siege Tech Gen 3 bevel. Now depending on which bevel you have, the 10 to 1, the 14 to 1, or even the 20 to 1, you will have to modify your anti-reversal latch differently. With 14 to 1 ratio gears, you don't have to modify it as much. With the 10 to 1 gears, you have to modify it a little bit more. And all you have to do is square up the tip of the anti-reversal latch so that it contacts the bevel properly. That's all we'll be doing for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time on part 2 of this build series when we install a new cylinder, tab plate, air nozzle, and MOSFET. Until then, I'm the Airsoft Tech, and I'll see you guys later.